officer is so courageous, he might throw out oh. Beijing's agent. A week after we found out, as a nation, that this agent had been threatening the family of a Canadian MP for a vote that he cast in this House, the Prime Minister hasn't thrown him out. In fact, he extends credentials to that agent, allowing him to operate with impunity from our laws here in our country. Will the Prime Minister show some courage, answer the question, and kick this agent out today? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about serious issues, and I'd like us to all be serious for a minute. In this House, we disagree about many things. We disagree about childcare. We disagree about a price on pollution. We disagree about investing in Canadian industrial policy. But there is one thing that I know every single member of this House in every party agrees on, and that is the sanctity of democracy in Canada and around the world. And it is simply wrong to suggest in any way any member of this House is not a faithful, patriotic, democratic Canadian. CSIS informed Canadians in this government that multiple members of this House have been targeted by foreign interference. All parliamentarians need assurance that their safety, their family's safety, and their freedom of expression are not threatened. And Canadians need to know that their vote counts and that our democratic process is free of foreign interference. The government needs to assure Canadians they're acting on these serious allegations. Let's start with some transparency. Have all MPs, all MPs impacted by interference been fully notified by this government? The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, I share the concerns of my colleague, and that is why last week I tabled an annual report of CSIS, which illustrated that they have provided briefings to 49 federal parliamentarians, and we will continue to provide the support that is needed for every member in this chamber to be able to do their job, secure in the knowledge that they are representing their communities in a way that is safe. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this is a government that will continue to do everything that is necessary to defend our democratic institutions and including the people that work in them. When something happens once, it's a mistake. When something happens twice, it's a pattern. And when something happens three or four or five times, it's a decision. The Prime Minister and members of his party have all perpetuated the myth that the member for Wellington Halton Hills knew about the threats against his family because he was briefed two years ago. It's false. At some point, someone made a conscious decision to gaslight Canadians. Will someone on the other side have the courage to stand up and apologize for the disgusting attempt to discredit a member of this House? Yeah. The Honourable Minister for Public Safety. Speaker, as my colleague across the aisle knows full well, both myself and the Prime Minister directly reached out to the member for Wellington Halton Hills to share the concerns with regards to the reports around foreign interference and his families. We offered him a briefing and we will continue to provide that support going forward. Mr. Speaker, what's also important is that while the Conservatives talk tough when it comes to national security, they never back it up. They cut nearly a billion dollars out of the national security apparatus. They've stood in the way of the additional tools to our national security apparatus, which are there to defend the members of this chamber. If they're serious about uniting behind the cause of defending the democracy, they'll start doing it today. Honorable member for Thornhill. Mr. Speaker, he wasn't briefed two years ago on it. They know it, and they are purposely victim blaming. He is gaslighting Canadians. This is about a member of this House serving his country and the safety of his family in the balance. It's appalling that the Liberals are tarnishing this MP, but it's even worse that the diplomat who perpetuated it is still here with the rights that even Canadians don't have because it was given to him by that government. If there are no consequences, it'll just happen again. The diplomat needs to go back to Beijing, and it needs to happen now. Will they do it today? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. I first want to say uh, there was a lot of heat in the House last week about this issue and not a lot of light. I think that what we all on this side of the House want to do is express our concern uh, for the member for Wellington, uh, Halton Hills, and for every Canadian who could be the subject, the target of any interference from China, from Russia, from any other country in the world. We will continue to take the steps to ensure that MPs are informed, that Canadians are informed, and that we have a safe and secure democracy. Thank you. Mr. Speaker. 
Canada's spy agency did in fact notify this government two years ago regarding Beijing's threat to a member of this House. Even the Prime Minister's own National Security Advisor confirmed that her office had received this information in 2021. Enough of the smoke and mirrors. Will this Prime Minister apologize for deliberately misleading this House? Be a leader for once, stand up for the security of all Canadians, and finally expel that Beijing agent. I just want to mention and make sure that everyone is clear is if you're misleading someone, you're doing it unintentionally. But if you're deliberately misleading, that is not acceptable language. I'm sure it was an error on the uh, member for the... I'm sorry? That's unacceptable. I'm sorry? As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, I just want to remind everyone there's certain language that is not allowed in the chamber, and deliberately misleading is not allowed. The Honourable Minister for uh, Public Safety. Well, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for reminding our colleagues in the Conservative Party about that principle because, in all candor, the only way that we are going to be able to do the work of defending our institutions is if we rid ourselves of the kind of partisanship and politicization which has been plaguing this subject now for weeks. It should be abundantly clear that if we want to protect our democratic institutions and the people that work in them, including every member in this chamber and their families, that we must do that together. This government has put in place new authorities and transparencies. Let's get behind the cause of defending it so we can have real debates that are rooted in our democratic principles.